Hi, I'm Gordon Waite. A spherometer is an instrument that you use to measure the radius of curvature on a telescope mirror. When I'm working on glass and uh, grinding telescope mirrors, there's two reasons why I do spherometry. One, of course, is to monitor the radius of curvature of a mirror to make sure that it's uh, heading in the direction that I want at uh, the speed that I expect. Uh, so in ending up with a mirror at the correct radius of curvature is an important point. But the second reason I use spherometry is to make sure that the piece that I'm working on stays spherical. You'd like, uh, while you're grinding, for a mirror to be spherical. Uh, it helps later on in polishing and uh, also helps you in the fabrication to keep the fabrication moving along in the direction that you want. So to do this I have a spherometer station here that I've built. Uh, I have an area here where I can put the piece that's under test. This is a 20 inch quartz mirror uh, f4.5 that I'm working on right now. And then uh, this is the computer controller for my spherometer. Uh, th this box is the control unit. On the box I can set the size of the spherometer ring that I'm using. I can uh, zero the ring, I can check the sagitta, I can set it up to whether I'm using inches or millimeters or diopters. And then the computer reads out directly the radius of curvature of the mirror on this readout. Now this unit is the actual measuring head on my spherometer. And you can see it uh, has, it's a standard three ball spherometer plate. Uh, three balls that uh, define the points where it touches the mirror and then there's a central probe that uh, actually is, is what measures the depth of curve on the mirror. Now if I uh, show you this I can if you look at the display on the back here as I uh, move this up and down the display on the spherometer changes and that's how it makes measurements on your mirror. Now this particular head on the spherometer is a five inch plate. It's uh, five inches in diameter or two and a half inches from each leg into the center. But on my spherometer the central plate can uh, unscrew and it unscrews right here on the on the thing and can come off and I can replace it with different probe plates to uh, do different kinds of tasks. For example if I'm doing uh, lens work I can have tiny little plates like this and you can see the three heads or the three uh, balls are very small on this one and then I may have a need for a slightly bigger plate like this plate is a, an 8 inch plate as opposed this is an 8 inch plate compared to the uh, 5 inch that I just had so if I'm using a little bigger mirror that's the plate this is a 12 inch plate you can see the size of this this is get, getting pretty large so it's uh, 6 inches from the balls on in And I've got plates all the way up to uh, a 16 inch plate for my the largest ring that I can put on the spherometer. Let's take a close up look at the controls on the spherometer. Uh, on the right here it shows the ring diameter and you can see there's little buttons to push to zero the spherometer or to check the sagitta. And on the left you see the actual digital readout of the spherometer. Uh, it reads out in inches or millimeters or diopters. I have many different uh, head plates for the spherometer. Uh, you can see on here, bottom row there is all small little plates. Each one's a different size for the most part, although I have duplicates of some of the more popular sizes. They go up through uh, four and five inches and then up through the eight inch plates and uh, 12 inch plates and the very largest one there at the top is a 16 inch plate. And then an important thing to have for a spherometer is a reference flat. And for that I have a surface plate there. You can see the computer controller and the probe are sitting on a large granite surface plate. This granite surface plate is uh, 18 inches wide and 24 inches long. So even if I'm using the big 16 inch plate I have enough room there to be able to zero it when I'm using it on a big mirror. So the process to take a set of readings on a mirror like this 20 inch quartz mirror, I first would uh, set the spherometer probe on the granite surface plate and uh, zero the computer out. Show zeros on the screen here. Then I would transfer it over to the mirror. Put it down on the near the center of the mirror and look at the reading. Uh, the reading is 180.122 inches. 
I'd note that, and then I'd move the probe out. Again, look at the reading. This is 180.122 inches again. And then I'd move it way out to the edge of the mirror and try to get the feet of the spherometer as far out toward the edge as I can. And then again, look at the reading. And once again, it's 180.122 inches. So uh, that shows a, a pretty good sphere on this, in that the radius at the center of the 50% zone and the edge are all identical. Now to do a, a very accurate reading, what I'd do would be to take a set of three readings like that and then re-zero the spherometer on the surface plate and then take another set on a different diameter on the mirror. And I would do that three, four, five, even seven or eight times on different diameters of the mirror so that I can completely uh, map the surface and then by averaging, for example, all of the center readings and then all of the 50% zone readings and all of the edge readings, I can make sure that I am spherical on the piece and of course I'll, I'll know exactly what the radius is so that I can plan my next grinding step. So that's how I do spherometry on a piece of glass or a piece of quartz in this case. And uh, this device sure helps make it fast. Uh, instant readout, no calculations necessary and uh, it just takes a few minutes to do all the tests that I need on a piece like this.